Dear Pamela Koch Hamilton, Executive Director of the ITC, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Last year, when we met, it was my hope that when we, went, we will meet again at the Joint Advisory Group in 2023, the world would be in a better place. Although a lot has been done, the world is still shaken by the cascading crisis of our times. They have fragmented our world and put our aspirations embodied in the Sustainable Development Goals at risk. At midpoint of 2030, only 12%, 12% of the SDGs are on track. We are moving backwards and not forward on many goals. Poverty has increased, not decreased. We are back at 2017 levels. Hunger is increasing for the first time in decades. And gender equality is nearly 300 years away, according to DESA and UN Women. And the means to invest in the SDGs are severely compromised by the debt burdens of many countries. Today, 3.3 billion people live in countries that spend more on debt servicing than on health or education. This is almost half of all humanity. We are not on the right track. We must build and nurture more resilient and inclusive economies. From a trade perspective, which is the focus of our institutions in this meeting, there are three areas we must pay particular attention to. First, we are going through a digital revolution, which not only affects how products are traded, but also the nature of trade itself. The ability to participate in trade depends increasingly on digital skills, infrastructure, and frameworks. But the gaps between countries, between urban rural areas or gender, in access to and use of digital technologies are deep and widening. Second, climate change. It is merciless and unfair. Many developing countries that have contributed little to global warming have fewer means for mitigation and adaptation, although they are by far the most affected. We need to transition to a low carbon world, but this must be not only a transition, but a just one. Trade and trade policy at all levels can help accelerate this transition, for example, the energy transition to deal with climate change or by contributing to improving market access, supporting technology transfer and the diffusion of technologies, or ensuring widespread production and access to environmental goods and services. Third, to foster more inclusivity, micro, small and medium-sized enterprises need to be able to connect to an integrate and integrate into global value change as the latter remains the main vehicle for international trade. If we are to succeed, MSMEs must be able to compete and thrive in today's and tomorrow's world. These enterprises are the backbone of our economy, representing over 90% of all business worldwide and over two-thirds of all employment. ITC, WTO and ANCTAD have worked together on many of these fronts. Let me highlight some of them. To support digital capabilities, ITC has supported various e-trade readiness assessments and e-commerce strategies and action plans that we have developed with countries. ANCTAD also partnered 
with ITC to support the government of Kazakhstan, for example, in the development of e-commerce legislation in a sub-regional project. To facilitate MSME's participation in global trade, ITC, UNCTAD and WTO run jointly the Global Trade Help Desk that provides a single window to trade intelligence such as tariffs, non-tariff measures, and trade data. The portal offered MSMEs an invaluable means to access quickly information about trade barriers implemented during COVID. We are also deepening our collaboration to develop a comprehensive methodology for the simplification of trade procedures. This work draws on our cooperation on data collection in the area of tariffs and non-tariff measures. For 16 years, we have jointly published the World Tariff Profile. Now, to support the green transition, UNCTAD and ITC have collaborated in creating the United Nations Forum on Sustainability Standards to advance the understanding on the topic and ensure that standards translate into real opportunities in developing countries. These are just some examples, but we want to do more. It is only through collaboration and synergies that we can tackle the challenges of this time. For instance, at the upcoming SDG Acceleration Day in September, high impact initiatives will be announced. We have already liaised with ITC about complementary support they can provide for the implementation of our proposal on a trade initiative. Then, at the COP28, we want to partner with WTO, ITC and the International Chamber of Commerce for a trade pavilion to advocate and showcase our work undertaking to use trade as a means against climate change. So, dear friends, the SDGs are a promise that we made to ourselves and the generations that will follow. To keep that promise, we need to make the best use of our collective resources, talents and efforts. I know that Pamela and her team share this vision and I want to thank her very much for her leadership. I also want to express my gratitude to all donors and partners that are supporting us on this journey. Thank you all very much. <laughs>